let's talk about the mob wives of the Sopranos. Just a quick note, I'm only including wives here. Start with Gabby Dante. Gabby Dante is like ride or die. She knows what world he operates in. Gabby even encourages so when he's acting boss while Tony is in a coma at the hospital. He tells her that he's always been more kind of, you know, about advice, strategy, behind the scenes. And here you are, Syl. The times make the man, honey, not the other way around. Gabby Dante has no patience for outsiders coming in and talking trash about Italian Americans, or what she perceives as talking trash. Well, I'm gonna cut him a new one. How dare you let her suffer humiliation and embarrassment at the hands of an outsider? I suggest you think about who really keeps this parish alive year after year. We see at the end how caring and attentive Gabby is. Gabby Dante, whose name is Marine Van Zant in real life, is married to the person who plays Silvio Dante, Stevie Van Zant. So I'm sure it wasn't hard to show those feelings of love and concern. Angie Bompensero. In the first season, Puss's wife, Angie Bompensero, was a different woman. So this is the real Angie Bompensero. In the beginning, she seems pretty helpless. Her husband, Big Puss, she calls him Sal, comes and goes and comes and goes as he pleases, disappears, comes home, back and forth. So she definitely suffers. And we see her struggle. How are you doing, Angie? Was he gone? Oh, you know. I'll tell you, shopping for one is no picnic. 24 years, he disappears one day, and I get left with a sick dog. Tony helps out, and I am so grateful. I, it covers the basics, but anything extra, there's no way, Carmilla. Jeez, oh, Angel, I'm sorry. That, that must be so tough. But then she grows. And by the time we're in season five, she's running Puss's Body Shop. Now, that's not to say that Tony doesn't give Angie crap every once in a while. Or, as Carmela would say, this is not to say I don't get a ration of shit in every conversation. Well, you look like you're doing pretty good since we had that phone call where, you know, you asked me, could you take over Puss's body shop? Thank you for that, Tony. You didn't have to say yes with all the other kind of business you do through here. Uh, anyway, his name is Phil, and uh, Carmela sends a love. Here I am. Is that a Porsche? I had my eye on it for months, the gift from Tony. I thought about a Boxster, but I don't know. The vet felt more like me. So, how about you? Are you dating? Did my hours at the body shop? Ladies. One of Carmela's biggest insecurities is related to finances. Way back when, she and Angie were kind of in the same position. Now Angie's more financially independent. Put me down for $2,000 worth of body work and or paint. But not only is she financially independent, Based on what she tells Carmela about being too busy with the body shop to date, she's not relying on anyone else for that emotional or romantic connection either, which is something else that Carmela obviously struggles with as we see throughout the show. Rosalie Aprile. You supply the war, I'll supply the headlines. How conceited. I mean, it's like Judas is something eating that last supper with Jesus, and the whole time he knows they're gonna crucify him. I mean, at least Judas didn't go into any apostle protection program. Rosalie also knows how to stick up for a friend. Fucking nosy, eat your money God. She also knows how to be blunt and how to tell the truth, even if it's not what someone wants to hear. If Tony suspects one iota, you know what'll happen if you're real. These guys are living in a different century. Didn't stop you. Steve at the gym? I feel so guilty all the time, the lies and the sneaking. It took Jackie going in the hospital to get me to stop. So just another interesting side note about Ro that makes her stand out in some aspects from the others. The truth is, Ro really endures a lot of loss and grief throughout the series. First, she loses her husband, Jackie April Sr., to cancer. Then her son is killed at the end of season three. Yes, he was a dumb fuck, but still her son. But at the same time, when they go away to Paris, she wants to actually go away to Paris. When we were in St. Eustache, I noticed that you lit two candles for Jackie and Jackie Jr., right? You know, we never really talked about that. About what? Jackie Jr. What's he to talk about? 
We're on vacation. We're having a beautiful dinner. Why would you bring this up? He's dead. He's gone. What can I do about it? Light a candle. What's the matter with you? Why would you bring New Jersey here? Why can't we just have a good time? I saw Laura Bazzi in the dressing room at Lowman's. Definitely had some work. There are also two different Donna Parisi's, as we see here. Different one in Rat Pack from the finale. Horse goes. There's no man. Right. Right. A horse goes to a vet, and the vet looks at his face, and he says to him, my friend. A horse goes to the doctor. The doctor says, why the long face? <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Lupertazzi. We only see Nicole on a few different occasions, but what really hits home about her is how Carmine tells Tony that she tells him she doesn't want to be the wealthiest widow on Long Island. Nicole comes up with the drink. She says... Darling, I think it's time you took a rest. I say, I'm gonna, we're gonna take a vacation. She says, that's not what I meant. I don't want to be the wealthiest widow on Long Island. I want you to quit now. I'm not ashamed to say that she made me cry. That wonderful, loving woman. Carmela tells Tony repeatedly, what is she gonna do about money? What's going on? What happens if something happens to Tony? But for Nicole, apparently, it's not just about money. She doesn't just want to be a wealthy widow. She wants to be with Carmine. Marie Spadafore is the wife of Vito Spadafore. They have two kids together, Vito Jr. and Francesca. She's fairly easygoing, low maintenance, at least when we see her. She's a nice woman. I'll just state it plainly right here. And I feel badly for her. It's really, really hard for her, particularly after Vito's death when everything goes into the news and then her son starts getting bullied at school and we see how that leads to a lot of shit later on. Literally. But the police think it might not have been a gay thing. Marie, honey, they pick up strangers in bars and truck stops. Patty Leotardo. Wow. What can I say? You know how Tony tells Livia that if she was born after those feminists, she'd be the real gangster? I kind of feel the same way about Patty. It's Patty who really presses Phil about taking care of Vito. Father put it so well last week. There's nothing gay about hell, he said. That's good. I'm sure he didn't come up with that himself. One thing I do know, Vito has to be made to face his problem squarely. Jenny Sack. When we think of Ginny Sack, we often think of Ralph's mole joke. While Ginny is imperfect, as is everyone else on the show, she's also a very caring wife. Johnny Sack's actually one of the only guys who doesn't have a gumar. You want a cigarette, baby? Karen Baccalieri, famous for her special ZD. We only saw Karen on a few different occasions, but we saw enough to know that she was a nice lady. She seemed very down to earth, very calm. Quite different from Bobby's next wife, Janice. Mom tried to call you. She wants you to pick up from station A class before you come home. She can't do it? I'm stuck in traffic. Now I gotta go to the store. She had to go get some crowns or something. Your mother's a real pain to you-know-what sometimes. When she gets home, tell her I said thanks a lot. As we know, Karen tragically dies in a car crash, and what makes it even more ironically tragic is that Bobby's annoyed with her as he drives home because he has to stop at the store to get something. Meanwhile, just up ahead of him is Karen's fatal car crash. Jojo Palmisi? What fucking pay? You slit your wrist, why don't you? Jojo is married to Mikey Palmisi. We primarily see her in season one because Mikey's killed off at the end of season one. Though we do see her again in season four when she's trying to make nice with Bobby Baccalieri soon after his wife, Karen, has died. Janice puts an end to that, of course. But anyway, 
I really like JoJo because she and Mikey have this really great chemistry. They like to yell at each other, but it's it's funny. She's funny. What was that sick fuck talking about? Mind your business. Whatever it is, Mikey, we're going to Vegas next month. I already lined up childcare for Francis Albert, so I don't want to hear it. Deanne Pontecorvo, the wife of Eugene Pontecorvo, and Deanne's ready to get the fuck out of New Jersey, specifically to Naples, Florida. So she knows that Eugene's having to talk to Tony and trying to figure out a way to get away. But what she doesn't know is that Eugene's also a rat. So not only does he have Tony on his ass, but also the federal government. Both are not easy to deal with and get away from. Rusty! Gianna Emilio. You don't answer? Someone calls you? Look at this shit now. Gia Gata. <laughs> Come on, Ma. Let's go downstairs for a little while. Come on. <laughs> you gonna let that animal get away with this? Carmela? Father is a spiritual mentor. He's helping me to be a better Catholic. Yeah. Well, we all got different needs. What's different between you and me is you're going to hell when you die. Excuse me. Angie here? In the office. We can get you anything you want, sweetheart. Airbags, chrome rims. Oh, oh hi. Oh, my. I'm sorry, am I interrupting something? I'm here for the uh, free bodywork certificates for the auction. Oh, that's right. But if you're busy, this will just take another sec. Okay, sure. Well, she's got enough money to do that, huh? Well, she's pretty successful with that body shop, so. She's one of us. Now it's like she's one of them. In a larger sense, something that differentiates these other ladies from Carmela, from the way I see it, is that each of them have a particular personality trait that makes it easier for them to cope with the regularness of life, with the world that their husbands inhabit, with that general uncertainty and back and forth. There was this one night in the hospital when it was very touch and go with Tony. Mm -hmm. He came out of the coma for a minute. He said, who am I? Where am I going? You know, at the time, I didn't know what he meant. Coming here, I feel the same way. We worry so much. Sometimes it feels like that's all we do. But in the end, it just gets washed away. Olivia Soprano. Tony tells Junior Soprano in early season two that an old woman made an ass of him that old woman being Livia Soprano. And I think he's pretty on point when he tells her that if she were born after those feminists, she would have been the real gangster. Well, if it bothers you, maybe you better talk to a psychiatrist. Well, what are you talking about, a psychiatrist? Well, that's what people do when they're looking for somebody to blame for their life, isn't it? You threaten to smother his children. What does that mean? Stick this fork in your eye! You know, everybody thought Dad was the ruthless one, but I gotta hand it to you. If you'd been born after those feminists, you would have been the real gangster. Janice, a.k.a. Parvati Soprano. That bitch is lucky I didn't kill her! Well, we know that. What? But on the other hand, she called Sophia her daughter. I don't give a fuck. All right, I don't give a fuck. But how many times I gotta tell you, get control of your wife? Oh, I wanna go with you guys. He said no. Janice Soprano, the young Janice that we see here, gets married to Bobby Baccalieri after season four. And she's quite a pistol, literally and figuratively speaking. Speaking of pistol, Things didn't work out so well with her prior fiancé, Richie April. If only he'd listened to his own rule. What? Tell me your earring went in the fucking drain again. I'm pregnant. Kelly Moltisanti. Kelly Moltisanti's not really a typical mob wife. 
she doesn't come from that life at all, though I'm sure she's not that naive and knows that that's what Christopher's involved in or that he was involved in it. So she gets pregnant and Christopher says, let's have the baby. Let's get married. I think he really wanted to settle down and start that family, even though he really didn't know Kelly that well to begin with and vice versa. Let's get married. Drive to AC, make a day out of it. Are you serious? Christopher, I love you. <laughs> My baby. There are a few miscellaneous wives that we don't really see or hear much about. For example, Nucci, Ray Cardo's wife, not to be confused with Nucci Gualtieri, just to clarify. Annalisa Zuka. What can I do for you? Well, you can introduce me to the boss. You can talk to me. <laughs> A fucking woman boss? So what do you want? Never happened in the States. Never. Our men kill each other. All my brothers, for example, they all got murdered. Or they go to prison. Rome has a war against us. But our men are in love to their mama, huh? Eh? So obeying a woman is not a um, uh, commiseration. Comes natural. I'm asking you nice. Or what? Hey, look. I don't even think you understand. I want you to talk to your husband about this. My husband? Fuck you. He is never coming back. So you have to fucking deal with me. So what is next on that list? I hope you enjoyed this video. I miss my violin. A violin? Violet, my wife. She was everything to me.